Welcome to Sound the Dorms. My name is Kenneth Muirkel. The title of the sermonette is Doctrinal Buffet. What's your favorite item on the buffet of Christendom? What are we talking about? Well, we can give a few illustrations here so we can kind of get the point across before we continue on. But take, for example, the issue of, it's a contentious issue, but with the Christendom, that is, not within the scriptures, but within Christendom, the issue of homosexuality. Friends, the scriptures declare it an abomination. It's the filth of the flesh. I've heard secular individuals, atheists, individuals who don't believe in the God of the Bible, who have read the Bible and, and said, yeah, it, it condemns homosexuality. What a rebuke. To Christendom, do you have non-believers that who read the scriptures, who say, "Yeah, it's pretty clear it condemns homosexuality," but within Christendom, man, just go down the doctrinal buffet till you find a doctrine that tickles your ears. Same thing with abortion. I mean, the scriptures are clear about the life of a child. In my mother's womb, you knew me. Friends, you don't like that notion? Just move down a doctrinal buffet. You find something that tickles your ear. What about women as being pastors or teachers? Lording over men? Well, that ought not to be. That's clear. It's clear in Scripture. Nothing wrong with teaching women to love their husbands for that Scripture. Or raising their children in the fear of the Lord. That Scripture. Or it doesn't mean that they shouldn't, as an illustration, know that 1 plus 1 equals 2, but that doesn't make them a math teacher. Listen, what about wives submitting to their husbands in all things? Well, just move down the doctrinal buffet until you find a pastor who puts the woman on a pedestal and has wife worship, preaches wife worship, that, you know, if the husband was doing his job, then she would be submissive. Really? Is that what scriptures teach? You're telling me that the Lord of glory, Jesus, when he was down here on the earth, had all men submit to him? Really? He found a lot of unbelief. I mean, these aren't, too naturally, they're not attractive teachings to the natural man. Because they're an enmity against this. It's like some big secret or something that you're a sinner and I'm a sinner. No secret. God's not surprised. That's why he died for us. you got to get to the labor and confess it. The Spirit interprets the Spirit. The Word of God was written by men who were moved by the Holy Spirit. And it takes the Spirit of God to interpret the Spirit of God. Some think that you can just read the Scriptures and find salvation. No, the salvation is Christ. Others think, well, I just have the Spirit and I don't need the Word of God. Man, you need both. You need both. You know, we think oftentimes, well, if we could just get rid of these false teachers, that would solve a lot of the issues. Again, that's not, that's not what Scripture proclaims. Scripture proclaims you get rid of the demand and there, there'd be no supply. I mean, we read 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, the third verse. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Well, who's the they? Well, let's keep reading. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves. Who's the there? Well, they shall heap to themselves teachers. So, the ones who are not enduring sound doctrine and who are after their own lusts are not the teachers, but it's the sheep that are heaping teachers under themselves having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. Holding false doctrine. You know, to hold that is sound biblical doctrine, it does not mean that that teacher, that preacher preaches truth most of the time even though they believe something contrary to the Word of God. That's not what it means to hold sound doctrine. 
holding sound doctrine means that what you teach is what you believe, and what you believe is what you teach. Now, I had an individual one time, we were talking about the various heresies within Christendom, and we were talking about different individuals, about what they're preaching, about how on a particular subject matter they're preaching a heresy. We made a comment, he goes, yeah, but they don't preach it all the time. What are you, an 80 percenter, 70 percenter, 90 percenter? Well, he's a 95 percenter. He preaches everything good, but he don't believe in a virgin birth, as an illustration. He preaches everything good, but he don't believe that wives are to be submissive to their husbands and all things. Well, that word submissive doesn't mean obedience. Friends, it means obedience. Just as we are to submit ourselves to every ordinance of man, there are many ordinances of man that are not biblically based. That is, they are not the commands of man. For example, I mean, we live in an affluent country. Do you realize that the average earning for the entire populace of the world is $7,000 a year? That's the average. But do you realize that only 20% of the world makes $7,000 a year or more? Only 20%. And here in the United States, we we are in the top 10% of earners in the entire world. Now, the scriptures don't say to charge them who are rich in your neighborhood. He said charge those who are rich in this world at this time to be generous. But we have ordinances of man in this country. Now, the scriptures are clear. It says be content with food and raiment. Now, here in churchendom in America, well, that rain, it means housing and cars and good jobs and medical insurance. Friends, that's not the Word of God. The Word of God says be content with food and clothing. But instead of preaching the truth, which also says to be submitted to every ordinance of man. See, having a house with indoor plumbing is an ordinance of man. It's not what God says. It's not God's Word. God says to be content with food and raiment. That's clothing, friends. That's not shelter. Now, what do you think? What are we going to call God a liar? We're going to say that we're smarter than God, that God doesn't understand if you're in Alaska, you're going to have to be sheltered from the weather? Friends, you got to get back to the Word of God. You got to get back to truth. And you got to go to your high priest, Jesus. He already knows we're sinners. I don't need to hide it from him. That's the glorious news. That's the good news. He died for our sin. The heart is deceitfully wicked. Above all things, who can know it? The Lord Jesus knows it. You don't have to hide it from him. You take it to him. I heard a man the other day, a very prominent minister. He was speaking on some passages of scripture, and he, and he made the statement, which in essence stated this step into the unity of peace step into the unity of peace well the context of course he was coming from Ephesians in the fourth chapter the third verse where it says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace it sounds good but the context in which he kind of made this statement was in the following he was talking about how within Christendom there's a lot of diversity, not just among the members of the church, but there's even more divisiveness amongst the pastors. Now we need to step into the unity of peace. Friends, there is peace in truth. There's peace in Christ. He is the truth. It's the Spirit. It's being one in Christ. Now there are different gifts. There are different gifts of the body. Everyone has a measure of Christ. But working together doesn't mean I condone your heresy. That's not what unity of peace is. Unity of peace is we all come into conformity to the scriptures, to the word of God as revealed by the spirit of God. That's what unity of peace is, friend. we got to get it out of our heads that there's no peace outside the truth. Because Jesus is the truth, full of grace and truth. Our unity is in the truth, it's in Christ. It's unity in the Word of God, the Spirit of God. This is the unity that Paul preached. He didn't preach the covering over of erroneous doctrines in order to maintain unity and peace. 
people outside of Christ are looking for peace and unity without the godless world saying they can have peace and unity without God. It's a Tower of Babel. Let's listen to a couple scriptures regarding doctrine. In Acts, the second chapter, the 42nd verse, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayer, saying, Did we not straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Friends, they had such unity that they filled the world with this doctrine. Unity, the same truth. Let's pray God gives the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we might know him. And God bless.